Morning, everybody. Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. So, as promised, we're doing a full on tropical outlook here. And as we know, the main topic, of course, is going to be barrel here. Barrel has now made it up to major hurricane status. It's one of the earliest times that we have ever seen a major hurricane. This is an incredible storm to look at on satellite, just even looking at it from a distance. We'll even get a more up close look at that in just a second here. But we also have to talk about these other two invest areas. The chances of these developing into tropical depressions or named storms will be increasing over the coming days here. The window's kind of running out for Invest 94L, but there's a 50% chance of that developing within the next 48 hours. And this next storm that's behind Barrel, I think this one might be our next name storm. We'll have to be extra watchful of this over the next few days as this continues to follow a track that is very similar to Barrel, but may end up diving a little bit further to the south. There's still a lot of questions with this one. But... The main focus, of course, is going to be on barrel. Let's take a look at the satellite here. And if you look towards the bottom left, you'll actually be able to see the water vapor imagery to go along with these two storms. Look at the buzzsaw that is hurricane barrel, or should I say major hurricane barrel. This was as of five o'clock this morning when this got upgraded to a major hurricane. And then if we look behind it, you can actually see the other, you can see the other invest right here, invest 96 coming into play here. And then here is 94. 94 is looking better. You're seeing a lot of healthy convection with this as well. If you look over on the um, water vapor imagery, there's an even better look at barrel over here as well. Plenty of moisture around it. Very healthy hurricane. Te almost, I would say, textbook at this point. And then you can also see the amount, like I said before, even on the, um, on the infrared imagery on the main screen here, you can see even with the water vapor, that there is a lot of convection going on around 94L. We're still struggling with a little bit of dry air on 96 here, Invest 96, but I do think as we continue to go forward, the environment is going to improve. It just has to overcome this dry air, which you see right here in the yellowish brownish color here. This is definitely not what you would want to see if you're looking for tropical development. But out ahead here of barrel, plenty of moisture ahead. And it only gets better. It also has a nice little moisture cocoon around it, too, in order to help keep things going here. But in any case, let's get, keep things rolling. And we'll go ahead and take a look at what our forecasted track will be for barrel starting out. We already kind of have an idea of where these other two systems are going to be going. We already know that for the most part, we're going to be concerned about 94L heading into Mexico at this point. 96 is still a little bit uncertain, but I think it's going to follow a similar track to barrel. But if we look at the track as it stands right now, they actually have this now expected to become a category four hurricane. And if you watched yesterday's video, then you know that we were actually talking about the potential of that already being a thing. And it definitely looks like that trend has come to fruition here from the looks of it. We'll get to look at the intensity spaghetti models in just a second here. Keep in mind that still is actually experimental, but it's been very accurate. I've used it last season, and I think that it's been phenomenal here. Also, another thing to make note of with Barrel is now there are hurricane warnings in effect for the Windward Islands here. So if you're over here towards this region and you happen to be catching this video, or if you happen to be planning a vacation towards the Caribbean over the course of the next few days, hold off on that that probably would be the best course action because you don't want to get caught up in this one. I mean, you could see the storm. You've seen the storm on satellite. It is not something to play with at all. Not much has really changed with the track in comparison to yesterday. We are getting a little bit more clarity as to where it may go. I'm thinking that this might end up hitting the Yucatan here if it continues on its current trend here. But as we know, these storms like to wobble and make little turns as we continue to go forward here. But with the way the uh, upper level wind pattern is, I don't expect it to make a major jog off to the uh, east, off to the east here. Yeah, I was trying to make sure I have my words right. So I'm not sure Florida is gonna be in, but gonna be under the gun or not yet. I still have to watch over towards the, you still have to watch over towards the western part of the Gulf Coast here especially towards Southern Texas. I do think you'll get some rainfall out of this just based off of what our current trend is looking like. Of course, as we know, things can change pretty quickly. That being said, 
we go ahead and take a look at our spaghetti model guidance if we can find it where's the button at there it is goofy moment here if it'll work but um as you can see here are the spaghetti models a lot of these are favoring the yucatan here towards mexico some of these do have this taking a turn here it's kind of a split and then also it's a little bit hard to read because we have this other invest area behind barrel starting to get its own spaghetti models we can actually anticipate the uh, hurricane hunters to be flying through this today and we may actually see an upgrade to a depression possibly if things continue to uptrend with this same with this system as well we'll probably get a much sooner update as we're closer to the mainland at this point but in either case looking at barrels intensity now we're continuing to see that trend hold for category four for at least the next 36 hours things become a little bit more questionable once we get further along here i do think further strengthening is forecast beyond just the 130 mile per hour threshold i think we could maybe even get up to 140. i mean like i said the waters over this region over towards the caribbean and the gulf are pretty much like bath water it's nice and warm wind shear is light and this is going to create an environment that will allow the storm to further thrive so we might be dealing with a major hurricane for maybe well over 48 hours even I wouldn't even be surprised if it goes 72, but we'll have to see how things pan out with that. But in any case, I, the good news is I don't see this going beyond category four. I don't see this going all the way up to five or anything of the like, <clears throat> but we'll have to see how things trend as we continue to go forward here. I think land interaction is going to be a big factor. Wind shear eventually I do think will come into play, especially as we get past Jamaica here. There is a little pocket here and you'll actually get to see that in a little bit where I do think the wind shear is gonna to start to come into play here. Now, as we continue to go forward beyond this point, again, remember our areas right now, 94L is here, this is barrel, and this is 96L. 95L, if you're wondering which one that was, that became barrel. Now, as we continue to go forward, we see 94L out of the picture quickly. We see this most likely become our next name storm. I could not remember the seed name right now, so I do apologize for that. As we continue to go forward, I do see more pieces of energy coming into play. The good news is, though, this little ridge here seems to drop off a bit, and it's going to help bring a little bit of dry air into the equation from the looks of it, and also a little bit of wind shear to help weaken the, keep these storms kind of weak starting out. The reason why barrel is so strong is because it formed really far out to the east, which is pretty rare for June. You don't usually see this even in July. Maybe towards the end of the month, you'll see a couple of storms develop over here, but rarely do you ever see it in July. The fact that we're seeing a major hurricane right now is absolutely astonishing. But eventually we do start to get into that pattern where even the main development region is starting to come to life here. And we'll have to watch these pieces of energy that are coming off the West African coast here. The big wild card with this will be Saharan dust. Now looking at the wind shears we mentioned earlier, Big factor as to what happens with barrel will have to do a lot with this wind shear here over towards this region i wouldn't be so concerned about it we actually have a nice little feature called the tut here tropical upper tropospheric trough coming into play it's going to help keep this storm thriving for a little while here but eventually as we cross the windwards here we do see a little bit of wind shear trying to sneak its way in this is what could slow the storm down but this also may save the u.s here in regards to an impact that strong wind shear isn't gonna, is mainly I'm thinking gonna help keep this storm pushing off to the west here. Not so much giving it the chance to make a turn as we continue to go forward. I do have my questions with that still at this current point in time, but I don't see anything, anything that would steer it into the Gulf Coast here or into the Gulf of Mexico itself or the main region in the Gulf. So we continue to go forward here. You can see the wind shear even over here towards the towards the main development region starting to lighten up here you can even see the trend on the year here on the top right corner now as we continue to go forward from that point things start to look like they get more favorable in time here so going forward from that point we're going to look at what our moisture at the mid levels is looking like because this is going to be a key factor for our storms not just with barrel but with our next storm behind that and of course invest 94 
I don't expect much in the way of dry air to be an inhibiting factor with this one. Do I expect this to become our next damn storm? I'm kind of 50-50 on it. But 94 eventually is going to make its way past the Yucatan and into parts of East Central Mexico before fading away. Then we have our next name system. Probably, I would say our next name system is going to be right behind barrel here. Literally, this next low pressure right behind barrel will be our next name storm. I'm just going to make that prediction there. And then notice how we start to get some of that dry air in again. And this is why I'm not so concerned about these next pieces of energy that will be falling behind these two storms. And then after that point, eventually that dry air starts to really take root over the course of the next few weeks. But eventually we do start to see that moisture begin to win out. It's always a, that's always going to be the battle over towards this main development region. Is there going to be a lot of Saharan dust? And will there be a storm that can form up and overcome this? If, if the dry air wins out, obviously we don't have a storm. If not, and the wind shear is light, we could have some problems here in the future. But that being said, you can see both the GFS and the Euro here in the top right corner are favoring a lot of dry air right now. But as we continue to go on here, we're going to also take a look at the ensemble members just to take a look at the probabilities of low pressure centers forming and what you need to pay attention to the most of these red numbers right here this is barrel right here by the way <clears throat> so if you take a look at barrel and you see these isobars like this really tightening up that's usually a very strong storm that's developed here so you end up seeing this trend start to be the case with this storm here following barrel and then as we go from that point you can see pieces of energy starting to fly out here but they just don't really get formed up very well I think a large part of that's going to be due to the wind shear and the dry air over the region. And then the question becomes, what happens next over this region here? Because remember, there's several regions that we always watch when it comes to the Atlantic. And since hurricane season already is forecast to be what it is, and then we're already seeing some uh, out of season trends here, we're going to have to watch every region pretty much from this point going forward here. But like I said, you can see a lot of activity going on over here towards the western part of the gulf which we'll be keeping a close eye on so southern texas we might have to keep an eye on some some of this regarding the weather in the coming weeks but for the most part though i think we're we might be okay for a little while after barrel and that next name storm come through here in fact i'm gonna go ahead and take a look at what that next name storm is chris is the next name storm by the way just just jumping back in to reiterate. But in either case, all the model data that we've looked at here, we're in general agreement. There are a few disparities between the GFS and the Euro ensembles here, and of course the operational runs as well, but we'll have to see how things go. But for the most part, I'm seeing a fair amount of model agreement with this too. But of course, as we know, especially with it being the tropics, things change very quickly. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you're staying tuned to the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have that notification bell on as well. We're going to be probably doing almost daily updates at this point, maybe even two updates a day, depending on uh, Barrel's track from that point onward. Maybe even do some live stream coverage if it is applicable. But that being said, guys, take care. I will see you soon. It's the entire Metalhead Weatherman. Take care and have an awesome rest of your day.